What's up everybody and welcome back to the YouTube channel and for anyone new out there, welcome. We're here to be open, as you can tell by the title. So we're gonna do a little bit differently. Like I didn't wanna just sit and present you, present it to you. We're gonna work through this workout. We are going to reveal the stack that I used for my IPB Pro card. But first, uh, I wanna say that this, this video is sponsored by Legend London, so shout out to those guys. I've actually been using Legend London before we ever worked together for years and years and years because they were the best jeans for bodybuilders. And they've just sent me out a big care package here. Um, and we're just gonna do an unboxing. We'll go through some of the outfits, some of the things that I like about it and um, some of the things that I think you should pick up. Uh, so a lot of these things I chose and then they just ended up throwing in pretty much everything. So we've got some joggers here, which looks super comfy. Um, they've got the oversized black t-shirt, which is really cool. The, the, the kind of washed gray, I love, I love, really love the wash style that, that they bring. I also got another oversized tee um, and then lots of jeans and shorts. As you know, they are like renowned for their jeans, super stretchy fit and they do fit bodybuilders. And I will prove that to you now. So we've got the oversized tee. I'm wearing an XL, um, 6'1", and about 112 kilos at the moment. Uh, I've got 34, like now these are stretch fit, so you've still got stretch either side of these, but they are supposed to be slim fit. Um, the cool legend, legend kind of rope tag, really like that as well. But this is the XL, this is probably a little bit too tight for me. Uh, it's, not, it's not too bad. I'm not used to wearing such tight clothes, but I do, I do like the jeans. Like they're almost spray on. Probably people will probably look at me in public in these, but that's, a part of it isn't it uh but this is a real nice package for these guys i think we've also started doing uh, a little bit of jewelry as well which is something that i do like quite a lot so we've just got a nice little chain in here as well so they do have a lot of cool things on there so check them out link will be first one in the description so we're here at crayford uh we're obviously going to go for a push session but i didn't want to leave you hanging too long because i know you guys are chomping to know what what gear i took man what gear did you use, bro? I think the funny thing about um, competing in Alicante and competing in Portugal was I got two main questions from all the competitors when I won, was what was your cycle and who's your coach? And now half of them are trying to be coached by Cal at the moment. It's funny that people think it is down to these things. I think it's really important to understand that it's irrelevant largely the amount that I take because it's completely relative to my age of bodybuilding, my experience with different drugs, the amount that I've used over the last three years. You can imagine someone who's been using gear for 10 years is gonna should be but often it's not should be the different cycle to what someone's been taking for three years um, and vice versa for six months so the first compound um, you guys are gonna guess is one testosterone so I use testosterone and nanthate the whole way through why did I use an enanthate because I didn't want to pin myself all the time I could just do this over two three injections and I I, I'm not going to go into the amount of the amounts because I, I think that it's, again, it's relative to the amount that I could tolerate, but I basically pushed my testosterone up to the amount that I could tolerate without having estrogenic side effects, uh, and it was below, below 500 milligrams, way below 500 milligrams. For anyone thinking that you should start on 500 milligrams, my IFBB Pro cycle was less than 500 milligrams. A lot of you guys are going to be pissed off. A lot of you guys are going to be annoyed that I'm not giving the amounts because for whatever reason you want to know them, but you guys have to understand that it's my responsibility that I'm in a place and a position of power and influence whether I like it or not. Um, and I just want to do my due diligence the best that I can without influencing people, etc. but educating the best that I can. So testosterone, I'd say less than 500 milligrams. The first one, let's go one more. So the uh, second drug that I was utilizing from the start, I'm going to kind of do this in chronological order, and also injectables first, um, a drug that I, I, I do see uh, a place for in a lot of cycles, Primobolin. The studies and research into Primobolin have been pretty pretty, like, pretty like decent. It's obviously not a hugely strong drug, but it's been ran up to 1.2 grams in women a week with kind of minimal side effects. I, was no, I wasn't even using like probably about under half of that. And it helps in a couple of ways. One, it obviously uh, increases protein accretion, so you drive up your anabolism, but it also modulates your androgen to estrogen ratio. And it almost facilitates a little bit more testosterone because it modulates that androgen to estrogen ratio, which can also just help drive the anabolism a little bit further. So testosterone anabolic primo is an anabolic as well, so I could use it in the same injections less over time. And uh, I'll talk about the next one in a minute. Uh. 
So the next uh, compound that we introduced into the mix was Mastron. Enanthate, again, uh, generally everything was Enanthate, apart from the orals that I used. For me, Enanthate just works better because it's less injections. Now, the reason why we use Mastron is because we I'd put in enough Primo to say we don't want to put any more in, and we still potentially wanted to attenu attenuate that androgen to estrogen uh, ratio a little bit so we could add in uh, Masteron, but it also brings in a nice cosmetic effect. It's a slightly drier drug, in quotation marks, um, and can help with the cosmetic effect. So we brought that in. To be fair, super, super low again, almost, I'm trying to think of a, I'm trying to think of a crafty way to let people know how much it was without saying how much it was, but not too much really. Um, like half of what my testosterone was is where it started. So pretty, pretty low. And then we have one more injectable and then we'll talk about the orals. Time. Oh, those of you guys who saw my push day video, maybe in Orpington it was Muscle Works and you would have seen I had the four plates on the Smith machine. I don't know if everyone thinks about this, but different Smith machines have different mechanisms that make them heavier or lighter. So this Life Fitness one is actually a heavier mechanism than the one in Orpington, so I won't get four plates on this. It might be three and a half or three, for example. Um, but that's fine. All I do is in my logbook is I write down reverse minor Smith, incline press, whatever I'm doing, dash Life Fitness, dash Cybex, dash Atlantis, dash whatever piece of equipment I'm using, and that's a good way to progress that as you go forward. So the uh, final injectable that I used, Trent. So I used Trent E as well. A lot of people like to use Trent acetate because you can get it in and get it out quicker. But relatively speaking, the dose that I was using was, again, in, in fairly, fairly moderate doses. Most people are used to running 300 milligrams minimum. People go higher. I was using a third of that. I didn't go above 100. I can say this one. I wasn't going above 100 milligrams at any point in my prep. I just think it says a lot to do with the the cycle design and actually just matching these drugs to push certain pathways that, that build muscle and attenuate um, muscle protein breakdown or, 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 or adjust that. And just kind of it, not pushing the pedal on all of them, but just giving yourself a little bit, give yourself a little bit, give yourself a little bit, give yourself a little bit. Obviously, trend being a glutocorticoid binder, primo attenuating protein accretion, testosterone being super anabolic. Like, they work in conjunction. Obviously, Mastron modulating the androgen to estrogen ratio, they all work in conjunction with each other. So it just allows you to use less of each rather than just say, let's run testosterone, let's throw in loads of anabolic to get lean. Like, it doesn't, doesn't make sense. We don't need to utilize that, that mode of, that modality of taking steroids anymore. You know, we've got amazing people like Derek Plates with Bates, Victor Black, Joe Jeffrey. These guys are talking real sense um, with widespread knowledge. So use it. Nice. Good press. Strong. This is uh, the rule 101 of having a hernia is don't pick up shit off the floor if it's heavy. Here I am. Oh. 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 Ah. On my elbows if you can. Push, 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 push. Come on, come on. Nice. Uh. Uh. Minimal help, eh? Yeah. It's coming back. That was 65 for seven in the spot. Did 75 for five in a spot in the off-season, so I didn't do that on quick. There we go, there we go, there we go. Nice. Yes. <sighs> oh. So the next thing, uh, anabolic wise, uh, we'll talk about Anavar and Winstrol. So I used Anavar from about three weeks 
uh, two and a half to three weeks before my first competition because realistically speaking you want to be running orals as little time as possible and if you can create the look that you want without them do it but situationally there may be a cause um, for things like Anavar so um, I use a really really low dose I actually started on like 10 milligrams and worked about 30 daily of course because I've got a short heart life short half life um, I did that for about two weeks before my first competition because I knew that I had to uh, continue uh, my cut for another four weeks which would bring that to six weeks in total which is the longest I would like to run some sort of uh, oral um, now Winstrock we actually didn't use the first competition we brought that in the second competition like the moment I got off stage or the day after I got on stage is when I put Winstrock in because Winstrock being much more toxic you want it in your system even less um, and situationally it's going to create a harder dry look but it's going to put a lot of pressure on your cholesterol liver kidneys so again if you can create that look without those two things I personally would uh, situationally, I'm going with my pro card. This is a very, very serious competition for me. I'm going to make slightly bigger sacrifices than other people would. But if you're someone who's casual, you don't need to be using these drugs. I hear a lot of Anavar first cycles. This is stupid. There's no need to do that um, at all. So we use those situa situationally over a six week period um, in, in, again, relatively low doses. And then as soon as the competition was over, we drop them. We're going to do the next exercise now. We're going to talk about thermogenics and thyroid drugs. Oh, it's a bit heavy. Jesus Christ. So, we can talk a little bit about thermogenics now. Uh, there are multiple, again, multiple different pathways to yield a similar result um, off using less. So, at one point, I had growth hormone, L-carnitine, Yohimbine, Clenbuterolin. Started really low with all of them and tapered up, except for growth hormone, which remained and stayed at three IUs until about six weeks out, and I pulled that out to pull in a little bit more fluid. L-carnitine I also pulled out when I had no more body fat to lose. Um, your himbine I also pulled out at two weeks out to pull the fluid out as well. Clen remained the same at all times. I didn't fluctuate it. I didn't go two on, one off. I didn't go two weeks on, one week off. That is largely a myth. And actually, if you look at the research, it's been studied up to, I think it was 120 micrograms across multiple, multiple weeks with little to no left, left ventricular hypertrophy or heart defects whatsoever, but also it seemed though it had a mild anabolic effect with continued use, which is why I don't chop and change. Receptors don't burn out, nothing like that is, uh, is a thing. Sit for the thermogenics, I used all of those in conjunction with each other at the start, and as I got leaner and leaner and dropped them off, I had less need to burn body fat and to utilize the thermogenics that burn body fat. So actually I got to ease off those um, as I got through the season. <laughs> Uh, touch on the thyroid, ancillaries, arimidex, tamoxifen, aromacin. Which, which AI did I use for my whole prep? I didn't use one. Okay, I used one. <laughs> I didn't use anything at any point until two weeks out when we wanted to pull down estrogen ever so slightly to bring a slightly harder dry look. So I used half a tablet of aromacin twice a week for two weeks in 16 weeks of prep. And that was when my testosterone was high. All because we managed to modulate this androgen to estrogen ratio efficiently. Didn't have to use something that's gonna crash my blood glucose. It's gonna make me less anabolic. It's gonna be less neuroprotective because that's what estrogen is. It's neuroprotective, it's more anabolic. It's gonna help with recovery. So never wanna stifle estrogen. Um, let's talk about thyroid. Uh, at the end of my prep, I was using T3 and T4. You have to use T4 or T3 to help the conversion. Um, and I was just using a HRT dose, so hormone replacement therapy. Those of you guys who know or have tested yourselves on your natural, if you go through an extended period of time on a cut or a deficit, your actual natural thyroid hormone will suppress. Um, happens a little bit easier in women. You might hear a lot of women who are prescribed T4 or T3 because naturally it can, it can dampen a little bit. And when we do get to that point, introducing something like a HRT dose of uh, thyroid hormone can indeed bump the metabolism and increase that fat loss potential. 
um, over that period of time. But I want you guys to consider the whole thing as a total, trying to use the minimum effective dose that you possibly can. Um, and know that this is just my experience. This is not recommendations. This is not me telling you to do anything. This is just kind of what I did and the reasons behind that. So hope you guys can take some value in that. Hope you guys can take some value in the honesty that I'm not trying to hide this shit. Like this is, this is the reality of it. This is the reality of what I do in order to chase my goals. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. See you in the next one. Peace. Uh. <laughs>